We have Mariah from <laughs> Reptophiles, and she's here today to talk to us about taking care of animals. So... All right. All right. So Mariah, your company's name is Reptifiles, and uh, I'm just going to put it out there. In the beginning, we had a little podcast. We started calling that, and you reached out to us and said, hey, that's you know our company name. And so we said, all right, we'll, we'll stop doing that, but you got to be on our show. So we looked you up. You have some awesome animals uh, moving in husbandry stuff that you're doing. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about how you got started and, and uh, what you got going on, what you're working with? So... Uh, I got started actually, uh, I mean, first to get started in anything, you've got to start at the beginning. And so I started with uh, keeping reptiles as pets. So um, I've had pet, a uh, lot of pets over the course of my life. Um, it drove my parents crazy. Uh, they used to refer to my uh, whatever collection I had at the time as my personal zoo. And Mariah, you're turning the house into a zoo. Uh, Sounds like my but, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I'm very fortunate that my husband is totally in on the crazy. <laughs> but, uh, and he's definitely been a, an enabler in this whole process. That's good. But it's good to have an enabler. <laughs> when you marry an enabler, you wouldn't believe the possibilities. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I've had various pet reptiles over the course of my life. Uh, when I was little, I would go to, like, I think it was Scales and Tails or Prehistoric Pets. I want to say it was yeah. Prehistoric Pets their shows when I was little there's a picture of me with like a, a Nile monitor or a water, water monitor uh when wow. I was like four years old and cool. my pediatrician had a sandfish skink named wink that I was totally obsessed with uh, I grew up with some red-eared slider for uh, turtles as um uh just kind of family pets they really make awful family pets but you know <laughs> we learned yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> And then as a teenager and throughout the rest of my childhood, I had some anoles. I had a, another red-eared slider. Um, with every successive repti or reptile or just pet in general, I had lots of other pets, fish especially, holy cow. Um, I learned something new about husbandry and what it takes to care for animals properly. I loved research. I was one of those really weird kids who... Uh, would read all the time instead of playing video games. It helps that my mom didn't let me play video games uh, most of the time or that in order to get video game time, I had to read for the equivalent amount of time. Oh, uh, that resulted in my learning about uh, checking a lot of books out at the library and uh, reading a lot on the internet as young as it was all those years ago. <laughs> um, it's definitely a lot easier to find information now than it was then. And I would yeah. just print out pages and pages and pages of uh, just any article I could find on caring for whatever animal I was interested in at the time. And I was also totally one of those crazy horse girls when I was younger. Uh, and so that resulted in a lot of reading very pretentious books on the right way to care for horses. Um, okay. And so all of that kind of combined so that when I, you know, was a little bit older and I got married and I finally had a place of my own. No one to tell me, aside from like the landlord, that I couldn't have a pet of my own. And so once the landlord thing was taken care of, I got a couple of bearded dragons. And that's where things really started. Um, I was an adult. I was uh, capable of taking everything that I had learned over the course of my growing up from doing my own research, taking my education all the way through college to, uh, and the research skills that I gained there and the writing skills that I gained there. And I was better able to go and find the right way to care for bearded dragons, to do this well. Mm. And turns out that was really, really difficult because there's a lot of information on bearded dragon care on the internet, if you haven't noticed. Mm -hmm. And not all is good. In fact, very little of it is good. Uh, so I was sifting through so many sources and just going, what the heck? Everything mm. says something different. How on earth am I supposed to find the the one right way? Like, mm -hmm. 
we start saying horses, this is so much easier. Well, okay, we've kept horses a lot longer than we've kept reptiles, right? Uh, so I didn't really know what I was doing at the end of the day. I had an idea. I had a, a good start, but it was definitely some, uh, a not, how do I put this? I didn't start perfect, I guess. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. it's really. Um, yeah. And I, I still very much had a lot to learn. And at the, around the same time, my, uh, the place where I worked, I, I do digital marketing for uh, my day job. And so uh, at the time, they wanted us to learn a little bit more about copywriting by actually running our own websites. So they gave us some sandbox websites and said, here, uh, do whatever you want with this. So I just, you know, took my hour a week and wrote. And eventually I decided, hey, I had a really hard time finding good information on bearded dragon care when I was doing my own research. I'm going to find post what I learned and the conclusions I was able to draw from the best sources that I could find and put it on the internet and maybe it'll help somebody. And that was a lot of fun. It was going right back to my roots of printing out all of those uh, sheets and articles on whatever animal I was researching and stapling them into a packet and then going and highlighting everything that I needed to remember. It was that same rush, that, uh, that feeling of accomplishment. And I gotta tell you, that first Bearded Dragon Care Guide was full of folklore husbandry myths, so many, because I still had so much to learn. And people that I still needed to meet, and uh, articles, and uh, papers that I still needed to read, books. But it was a start, and heaven, somehow, uh, people started reacting to it and saying, thank you, this is a really helpful resource. And of course, you know, whenever you get positive feedback, what do you do? You keep going with it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's kind of how Reptifiles was born. I uh, I started with the Bearded Dragon Care Guide and because I was still really new to the reptile world, uh, heaven knows that when you're new to reptiles, uh, you're in a phase of exponential obsession. Mm -hmm. um, and I think within a year of getting my bearded dragons, I also got uh, a Dumeril's boa and two blue tongue skinks. Um, so right. that gave me an opportunity to write more care guides. Um, I was also taking a, a technical writing class at the time, which helped a lot. But uh, that all went toward growing Reptifiles or before it really was Reptifiles. So where do you awesome. get your information from that, you know, cause being out, like looking out on Google, a lot of times you don't see a lot of the best stuff. Like for blue tongue mm -hmm. skinks, uh, it, for example, um, we, we keep blue tongue skinks. We've had them for several years. We've been breeding them. Um, we talk with a lot of Australians that actually deal with our, uh, our species of blue tongue skinks and um, a lot of the care stuff that's out there is minimal. Maybe it's like, yeah, that, that would work, but it's maybe not the best. So where do you get your information from? If it's not like uh, Google, I guess. So where, <laughs> like, where do you start? It's a complicated answer. Honestly, <laughs> uh, I get it from everywhere. One of the benefits of, being the kind of person who researches a lot mm -hmm. of different kinds of reptiles and how to care for reptiles that are very different from one another. Like right now I am researching, I'm in the final phases of uh, putting together a red eared slider care guide. And that has made me, uh, well, I can tell you one thing. I wasn't doing everything wrong uh, with my red eared slider when I was a teenager, but there are a lot of things that I didn't know. And my experience there was helpful, but there was still a lot to learn. And which means I basically had no idea what I was doing when I got into this project. So what uh, what animals are you working with? Can you show us any? Yeah, um, most of them hide most of the time. But um, so let's see, is the bow out? Yeah, he is. 
So I have a boa imperator behind me. He's I had, he's almost two years old. I want to say his uh, birthday is uh, May 15th. So he's almost two years old. And let's have a look at him. There is Mitski, the common boa. He is digesting from his large meal the other night. Uh, as you can see, he's staying exposed to his UVB light. I've noticed that he tends to spend much more time in it or exposed to it when he's digesting. All right, next, there should be a ball python in this enclosure. Uh, there is, but true to ball python nature, she much pre much more prefers to hide than spend a significant amount of time outside. So imagine that you see a three or four year old, can't quite remember at the moment, uh, pastel ball python somewhere in here. <laughs> And then, cool. if we turn around this way, we've got Kairos, my northern blue tongue skink. He's a rescue. So wow. we can see his sweet face right there. He just got right in there. Uh-huh. Yep. <laughs> I love front opening enclosures. They're the best. Also, I just have to say, uh, I am successfully growing daylilies in his enclosure. I kind of wanted a like a abandoned garden huh. kind of look uh, that's why i've got all these seedlings everywhere i'm trying to grow a few things from seed and the arcadia led bar is the best thing ever it puts out so much sunlight that these full sun part shade plants can actually do really well that's pretty cool so all of your <laughs> yeah. enclosures are live planted and bioactive almost all of them the ball python enclosure is semi-bioactive as in there are no live plants and well okay there's one there's a live pothos but that's it this okay. is my other blue tongue skink his name is hermes and he is a maruki indonesian he is a personality uh he he's definitely one of my most intelligent reptiles i can't tell Blue tongue skinks in general are just so 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 smart i think of them as mini tegus but uh, with this one in particular, he's just incredible. So uh, we don't want to take a ton more of your time, but if you could give uh, a little vote of confidence for, because this this hobby is very male driven, and uh, okay. you're, you're doing really well. And so if you can give a little vote of confidence, what would you say to uh, maybe a younger or even an older female that is saying, "Hey, you know, I if I want to start something, I want to get involved, um, but I'm a little nervous." What would you say to you know kind of help them along? Just do it. Honestly, it's stop thinking about what could go wrong. Stop thinking about what people might think of you because honestly, you are going to get hate and you are going to have people who think that you don't know what you're doing. And honestly, in the beginning, you've probably got a lot to learn and that's okay. It's okay to know that you have a lot to learn. In fact, that's what makes you good. That little bit of insecurity can be what ignites your success is always striving to be better. It's only when you decide I am the best and I have nothing left to learn in this world that things really fall apart. So just embrace what you've got, embrace that you have a lot to learn and let that make you sincere in your efforts to do the best that you can. And there are gonna be haters, don't listen to them. Um, sometimes they can teach you ways that you can be better. But most of the time, the haters are just people who don't want to change their ways or people who feel threatened by you. So there's really no reason to let them get into your head. At the end of the day, it's just do whatever you want to do. If you love it, do it. And who cares about anyone else who says otherwise? <laughs> Seems like pretty good advice and we really appreciate you giving that insight. Well, thank you guys so much. Make sure you like this video and hit that little thumb up. And uh, yeah, I just told you to like it. That's right. I'm saying you're not allowed to not like it. Um, <laughs> hit the subscribe button and uh, hit the notification bell so you can know when we're doing our videos. And we post them every Tuesday and Friday at 4 p.m. And then also the podcasts, of course, on Saturdays. So thank you so much. And hopefully we'll be seeing you guys next time.
We have Mariah from Reptophiles, and she's here today to talk to us about taking care of animals. So stay tuned for that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Ryan, Ryan, we have this weird dynamic. I don't know if you've watched any of our videos, but Ryan, like some of his intros, they, they, they start, start out they, really good. And they it? start to come down in energy wise. And all. It's this trend he's been on lately. Yeah. Anyway, the cage is fine. You look nice. <laughs> Yeah. So, so thanks for coming on. Yeah. So awesome. thanks for coming on. Um, thanks for asking me. This is fun. <laughs> well, you haven't started yet. We'll see if it's fun. No, I'm just joking. It's going to be great. So, I haven't had an interview that hasn't been fun. So that's great. No pressure, I guess. You're lucky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is the first one. It'll be like, pew, pew. Um, okay. <laughs> um,